What's up everyone, it's uh, Caddy with Money Vesting. So we are gonna be talking about the stock market in this video, talking about the S&P 500 as a whole. And uh, I, will, I will try to answer the burning question, which is whether the markets right now are undervalued, overvalued, or fairly valued given where we're trading at the moment. So I'm gonna break down five different indicators. We're gonna talk a little bit about the Buffett indicator, the price to earnings multiple, the uh, mean reversion valuation analysis. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about the interest rates and uh, margin debt. So those are the five things I want to break down in this video. As always, if you enjoy it, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and the link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining us. There is a 16% discount on an annual basis that you can take advantage of and of course get access to all the trading alerts, options alerts, swing trading ideas, and a lot of their private benefits and videos as well. So first things first, let's just dive into the Buffett indicator. For those of you who don't know what the Buffett indicator is, it is created by Warren Buffett and it was an indicator or a ratio to help us better understand the overall market value of all stocks combined. So in that ratio, you'll find the aggregate U.S. stock market value divided by the overall GDP, right? So that's the gross domestic product. So the Buffett indicator right now, as it stands, suggests that the market might be a little bit overvalued. This is based off of the data from February 17th, 2023. So very, very recent. And the aggregate U.S. market value sitting at just shy of $44 trillion dollars with an annualized GDP of $26.2 trillion, giving us a Buffett indicator of 167%. Now, over 100% is not necessarily a bad thing, but if it's way above 100%, you know, logically thinking also because the value is more than the production itself, obviously that gives us a little bit of a red flag or gives us some concerns, so to speak. Um, and that's one of the reasons why Warren Buffett created this indicator to begin with. This right here is the U.S. stock market value to GDP. And again, as of February 17th, 2023, you'll notice a 167% ratio of market value to GDP. That's 30% higher than the long-term trend line, which is again over here in gray, the historical trend line. And right now we are one standard deviation above the historical trend line at the moment. And you can see that the historical trend line also has been creeping up. It's been going higher. And right now we're sitting at above 100% for the historical trend line and the current number is 167%. So definitely a lot higher and also much higher than the historical trend line for the markets. The second one is the price to earnings ratio, which also suggests that unfortunately we are or can be perceived as overvalued in the markets. Um, now what I look for is the regular price to earnings multiple. But in this analysis, they looked at the CAPE ratio, which we have also talked about, created by Robert Schiller. This was a cyclically adjusted price to earnings multiple ratio, which pretty much goes over the last 10 years and smooths out the overall average. Um, and that ratio historically has been closer to 19.6. So this is a 44% right now where we are at over 29.1 on a CAPE basis uh, is 44% above the modern era market average of 19.6. Um, putting the current PE 1.1 standard deviations above the modern era average. This suggests that the market is currently overvalued. If you take a look at this chart over here, this once again shows you the historical average um, and where we are currently is one standard deviation above um, the, st the historical average based on the price to earnings ratio. And uh, that's about 44% above the historical average for the market. Now, you know, if you take a look at on an absolute basis, kind of ignore the CAPE ratio, look at on an absolute basis. Right now, we're at closer to 18 to 19 times earnings, not at 29, but instead 18 to 19 times. Um, and the historical average has been closer to 15. Um, and if you also do some other analysis that we have done in our previous videos, such as during inflation, when, when it's above 4%, during times when inflation is above 4%, and uh, we're in a very, very high tax environment, the average price earnings multiple in the last 100 years has been around 11. And right now we're trading at 18 to 19 times price earnings multiple. So that also does suggest that we are in an environment where valuations have certainly gone up back to back to some you know levels that we haven't really seen since 2021. And of course, the markets have rebounded fairly quickly. So that's number two. Um, and this, again, is going to be since 1900 till present. So a little bit over 100 years and how the S&P 500 has obviously gone up substantially. And so have the earnings. Um, you can see that we had a pretty substantial decline in 1920s. So did the market. We had a decline in the 1930s. So did the market. We had a decline in the 1940s and 50s. So did the market. We had a pretty substantial decline um, in 2008, 2009. 
So did the market, of course. And then we had a little bit of decline in 2022, 2023. And the markets obviously are off from their highs. So S&P 500 and earnings, the price and the earnings kind of move in tandem with each other. They might lag each other a little bit, but eventually they are supposed to move together because the market is nothing but a so is a product of the actual earnings of what the companies are generating, right? So if the companies are not there, the companies are not generating good earnings, the S&P 500 should really not be trading at such high valuations. If earnings are phenomenal, if they're great, then yes, there's a pretty strong case to be made that the S&P 500 should be at higher levels. Um, but that, there we are with the earnings uh, multiple right now. So uh, again, I talked about the cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio. This is very similar to the regular PE. I look at both regular PE and CAPE and CAPE ratio looks as the current price divided by the average earnings over the prior 10 years. Um, now, the reason why this is not the best way to look at it is because the average of 10 years of the last 10 years is obviously going to be lower than a regular price to earnings multiple because in a regular price to earnings multiple, we're only looking at the last 12 months and the next 12 months. Obviously, the earnings are going to be much higher. But on a CAPE basis, you're, you're taking into account the last 10 years for, because the last, you know, five years, seven years, eight years could have been a lot lower in earnings per share because we're consistently growing. So you're taking into account some of the lower numbers from 10 years ago or eight years ago, and that's lowering your overall earnings per share, thereby increasing your price for earnings multiple, giving you a little bit of a distorted um, you know, outlook on the markets considering that the P multiple is sitting at 29 as opposed to the regular P sitting at closer to 18. So hopefully you get a good understanding, but bottom line is that we are still a little bit higher than where we should be. Um, and again, this right here is the historical average uh, sitting at around 20, which is the CAPE ratio. Again, on a, on a regular basis, it'll be closer to 15. Uh, and right now we are, again, a little bit higher than where we really should be trading at on a price earnings multiple basis. Now, when it comes to the mean reversion, uh, which is another really interesting type of analysis, this is nothing complicated, but instead just looking at the price itself and drawing a mean reversion, meaning that every time over the long term, the markets kind of trade overvalued and undervalued, but eventually there is a mean where the trend line is kind of pushing higher, it's growing, but, but it's kind of trading on its average, right? There's an equilibrium, so to speak, for the market. And unfortunately, based on the mean reversion also, as of February 17, 2023, the S&P 500 is currently trading at 39% above its modern era historical mean. That is about 1.1 standard deviations. And this is the chart that we can look at. And uh, this is a pretty big sort of change because the mean reversion strategy pretty much states that, look, the markets are going to be overvalued and undervalued you know, every time, like every time we kind of push up and push lower, we're going to be in situations where the markets are undervalued versus where they're overvalued. So for example, you'll notice that over here, markets were strictly overvalued. So I'm going to highlight that this right here, overvalued. And then this right here, the markets were strictly undervalued because they were trading below the historical, um, you know, mean or so to speak, the average. Uh, this right here, very, very overvalued. So you can see how we were trading way above the historical average. And then in 2008, 2009, we became really undervalued because we were trading below the historical average. Uh, and right now you can make a case that we're extremely, extremely overvalued considering how much we've gone up and uh, you know we're trading way above our historical average. So I'll let you decide you know, whether that is uh, that is a, that is a you know, correct way to look at it or not. But uh, the historical average certainly has some truth to the momentum and the trend overall, but doesn't give you too much insight into, into the actual valuation for, for the market. But instead, it tells you a little bit more about the momentum. It tells you a little bit more about the historical mean, the averages. And obviously, if you're trading below that level, then it would substantially be, it would be undervalued substantially. I mean, the market would be significantly cheaper, a lot cheap. Um, and, and, you know, we would pretty much be in a buyer frenzy at that point. But right now, we're definitely a little bit higher than what is suggested by the mean reversion evaluation analysis. Now, the next one is going to be the interest. Uh, actually, before we get to that, it's going to be margin debt. And margin debt pretty much goes over the investors, how much they're borrowing in order to invest in U.S. stocks. At one point, this number got to over almost a trillion dollars. And based on this analysis, and we can only get the data from January 31st, 2023. That's the most up-to-date uh, data available. And according to margin debt, it suggests the markets might be a little bit 
fairly valued. Um, and this right here is the chart, as you can see, that as of January 2023, we have seen a significant decrease in the overall margin depth um, in the markets. And that's dropped uh, at $641 billion after reaching all-time highs of over $1 trillion in 2021. So it was obviously a big bubble just waiting to be popped uh, because of all the margins and the borrowing and all that stuff. And of course, we've seen a significant pullback since. And there's been a big risk-off environment with cryptos falling, tech and growth stocks dropping 80 to 90%. The markets have come down and have come down to a far more reasonable level in terms of real margin debt. Um, and as a result, you know, according to this estimate, it, it, can, it seems to be a little bit more fairly valued. Uh, and again, this right here, we're trading closer to negative one standard deviation. So um, of, of the real margin debt at the moment. And the overall market, uh, you know, as a percentage of the real margin debt is about 0.58%. So, well, that's how much it's come down. Uh, but right now we're still a little bit over um, less than 0%. Actually, let me, let me see. So yeah, we're at $600 billion. So we're about half a percent. Um, as the entire total market value um, of the market. So this right here is going to be the interest rates. And as of February 17th, 2023, interest rates also do suggest, um, according to this calculation, that the U.S. markets are fairly valued. And uh, I've already gone over, you know, how interest rates work in the past. But the bottom line is, as interest rates go up, it becomes more difficult for companies to borrow money. It becomes more difficult for the valuations to hold up because higher interest rates means Higher discount rates means lower valuations, means lower free cash flows, lower present value of future cash flows, um, and of course, higher interest expenses for a lot of these companies as well. Um, but at the same time, as we see, uh, you can see that February 17, 2023, the S&P 500 4,079 is 1.1 standard deviations above the trend line. 10-year uh, tre treasury rates at 3.82%, about 0.7 standard deviations below the trend line and the composite sum of the two suggests S&P 500 is fairly valued given the current interest rate environment as well. So the bottom line is that I still do believe that I think the markets are a bit of a stretch uh, at the moment, you know, just based on the valuations. And again, there's different ways to look at it. Uh, you know, obviously you can look at the real margin debt. You can look at the interest rates suggesting the markets are fairly valued, but then you can also look at, you know, the Buffett indicator. You can look at the valuations, which is the P ratios. Um, and then not to mention the third one that we looked at, which was the mean reversion, which is really more of a momentum uh, indicator and kind of helping us understand what's the historical average for the market. But the real true indicator for me personally is the price or earnings multiple, which uh, once again does suggest that we are uh, a bit of a stretch. We are certainly higher considering the current macroeconomic environment, given where inflation is, given what the monetary policy looks like and interest rates are going to keep going higher and are going to stay higher for a little while definitely, uh, you know, raises some concerns about the current valuation of the market. Now, can this market be irrational and keep pushing higher? Absolutely. I mean, you know, this is the stock market, right? We can keep pushing higher. There can be still a lot of exuberance, a lot of euphoria, and irrationally, we can keep pushing higher. But that, that doesn't mean that that's correct. That doesn't mean that it actually makes it, uh, you know, appropriately valued, right? That just means the valuations get only more distorted um, to the upside than where we really should be trading at. So bottom line is, I'm a little bit more cautious. I would love to dollar cost average uh, in smaller quantities if and when the S&P comes down to maybe 4,000 or sub 4,000 would be great. Uh, but in the meantime, just kind of hedging the upside um, with, of course, holding and hedging the downside with simply selling calls to take advantage of potentially a pullback or, uh, you know, the market's coming down to a more reasonable valuation. So let me know your thoughts on the markets. Let me know what you think. Do you think the markets are currently overvalued, undervalued, or fairly valued? I would love to know from you guys as well down in the comment section below. As always, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to uh, uh, subscribe and of course hit that notification bell and the Discord and Patreon links are gonna be down below. As always, happy investing and I'll see you all in the next video.